Smartcast. This episode is brought to you by Snapple. Want to know another Snapple fact? The first hot air balloon passengers were a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. Ridiculous. Check out Snapple.com to find ridiculously flavored Snapple near you. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Hold on to your butts. We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Wesker demands. Now this affects Iris. Um, Iris, where are you? What you feel only matters to you. I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough. Iris, I have a tip for you. Don't take drugs! Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. What up? Welcome to Or Whatever Movies. I'm your co-host, Iris, and I'm here with Moonhead number one. Wesley. We're talking a movie available on Prime Video, The Idea of You. There was anyone but you, you, me, and Dupree, someone like you, 10 reasons I never want to see you again, or something. (laughs) So the idea of you is pretty (laughs) awkward as a title, I think. So I thought we were reviewing anyone but you. (laughs) And when we were together for mom's 80th birthday, you were like, that's the one. And you're pointing at anyone but you, but you meant the idea of you. Sorry, it's confusing and a terrible title. However, it is based on a book, so it has some precedent, at least for people who have read the book, which apparently a lot of people have. Is it a true story? There is some speculation that this is based loosely on the idea that some kid named Harry Styles from some band called One Direction, he got with Olivia Wilde, who is 10 years his senior. Now, that's different. Age difference is 15, 16 years for this couple. But Anne Hathaway flat out denied that it had anything to do with Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde. But Harry Styles is a successful solo artist now and is no longer 24 years old. You can never tell about pop stars. But everybody in all the research that I did is like, oh, man, it's a good thing you're talented because you're so unattractive. And they're like, ha, 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 with with this Galaxine kid. And Kelly Clarkson is like, he's got a good face, y'all, or whatever. But I think he kind of has dumb face. I... I'm going to be dating myself throughout the entirety of this episode, but I kind of think he was channeling the Christian Slater, Justin Bieber love child vibe. Just he had this look, this May, December look, by the way, the top, I don't know if you're going to get to IMDb comments, but did you read the the top and my favorite one that called this movie May, December for mommies? (laughs) Uh, He, so he looked like the dumb faced kid. From May, December. From to me. May, December. Yeah, I hear you. And I don't I hear know. You. She she didn't find him when he w- when he auditioned for the band at fourteen. Right, exactly. Uh, which was in a, in a weird way an important distinction. I think him being fourteen showed that the band had been around for a while. Like he wasn't a kid, kid. It wasn't gross, even though it was kind of gross. But he had been around so long that the the that her kid, Anne Hathaway's kid, was like they're so seventh grade. And granted, she's only, I think, supposed to be 16. But still, the boy band has been around for a while so that it wouldn't be completely out of line for him to say, I'll leave it all behind for you. I'll do it. I'll leave the band or whatever in order to be with you because that's what boy bands do. They fracture and some people fall away and others uh, become solo stars. And she would have really fulfilled her role as Yoko Ono. That was a little bit mean, but I was expecting the onslaught of trolls and mean comments to come much earlier. I expected this to be a full on she's trending or whatever, and it was going to come much more quickly. And it was going to become like a celebrity thing, like where she's running in and out of vehicles and be like, I can't do this hysterically in dressing rooms and like 
girls trying to like fight her and stuff. I expected many different directions in this movie. And a lot of the large themes were predictable and you knew they were coming. The way that they handled it was better, in my opinion, and made it for, for a more en enriching experience. You didn't expect it to be one direction? Uh, it, oh, see? But it, they denied it. They said it doesn't have anything. But they hit all the th the things, right? The Coachella, and they hit all the, the stuff, and TikTok, and all the stuff. All right. So we got to jumpstart this discussion, which means I'm going to be interviewing you. No. Being approximately no. the age of nope. Anne Hathaway and a mom. Nope. What? We're going to address the elephant in the room. I am not the authority on this movie. <laughs> Just because I'm in my, quote, 40s and I am, quote, a mom and I lived, quote, in Silver Lake. I don't know why I'm doing all these quotes. I'll just say if Brian collapsed tomorrow, this might be my fantasy. Maybe. But Ew. like I am the target for this movie. But this movie isn't for me. We're just going to, I'm just going to put it out there right now. What? Yeah, dude. It was aimed nope. squarely at you. And look, the Clark Kelly Clarksons of the world and whoever else, they're like, it's a great date movie. But also, my fiance is hella rom com devotee, and she is ear to ear during most of those movies. Not so much for this one. L really? Like, like, she wasn't like rolling her eyes or exasperated or anything, but the typical rom com connection where it's like mainlining, you know, just like it, it, right into her veins, it didn't seem to be present here. And I wonder why that was, but I think it's because of the reason that I kind of liked this movie, which is because it didn't go in the typical, you know, like people didn't wildly overreact. He wasn't standing outside in the rain. Um, you know, she wasn't like, like hysterical and 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 freaking out and screaming all the time or whatever it just it was it wasn't a comedy I, there's i don't think any part of this movie was a comedy and i guess maybe hence no laughs or smiles it definitely was a more intimate behind the scenes kind of as much sad as it was happy movie do you think that's why it is i think there's something to it because my alternate title for the idea of you was sad woman in first class oh but, yeah, she was. But I also, but I also think this has as much to do with the casting because, <gasps> yep. I mean, she seems a little bit like a bee, right? Anne Hathaway, like she's talking about her ex-husband, and she's like, "Yeah, Daniel, you ruined my life, and what he did really sucked and was inexcusable." But she was a really easy, great wife, right? No, she doesn't give you that impression. And this dude. As dumb face as he might be, <laughs> God, I sound so mean, was really sweet, but also kind of a tool. And he made up for his toolness by being like kind of by being all devoted and loyal and stuff, at least as far as we saw and like res and semi respectful. But also that was a hard line for this galaxy guy to to toe right between being like, you know, this entitled celebrity guy, but also being a respectful dude in courting this woman who like we know from Jerry Maguire, like you don't mess with the poutang of the single mom. <laughs> wow. Butchered that quote. That's the, that's the poster quote. And you have to put poutang in quotes, in additional quotes. Number one. What's the quote? It, What's the you quote? You don't shoplift the pooty from a single mother. That's what I'm saying. I attributed his to any tooliness that you perceived to his age, being a dumb kid and being in the spotlight since he was 14, ostensibly. He's just, he's an idiot who was ha having things handed to him who just happened to have a personal proclivity for older, I'm using quotes and you can't see them, women, because I expected I was allowing so much rope for him to hang himself as a stupid pop star. And then in that light, he was halfway decent dude, I think. Yeah. Can I just say, too, that nothing dates you more than anything you've said so far, like your hate for Anne Hathaway? That's how, like, early 2000s is that. <laughs> oh, we are we over that? I think so. Anne Hathaway is a person of extremes. Like, seriously, she was the Princess Diaries, which I never saw. And then she went to the fully, like, butt-naked... I think it was called Havoc, where she shed that image and people were like, oh, no, you you don't want to bite the Disney like princess 
thing in the mouth or, or in the on the hand or whatever that expression goes and people <laughs> loved her and she was like the print but she was successful in more adult movies and she won an oscar for les mis and it's like yay yeah and then, six minutes and then se- people mm-hmm. severely hated her and it's like where is the hate coming from and then there was something about she had like an italian boyfriend or fiance who was like a scammer and like totally took advantage of her and it was like super embarrassing in public. And and she, so she's still trying to do her thing and she's Anne Hathaway and she's the Devil Wears Prada and everyone loves her when they're not hating her. And then I also saw something else in the course of this that she is talking about her age and saying how grateful she is to be 40 and to be a public figure and stuff because she's now five years sober. And I guess that was a big thing for her personally. So a person of extremes that's very interesting, but I never got on the bandwagon for hating, so I'm not sure the reason for all the vitriol, and I thought it had long worn off by now because I think this character stands because they're publicly hated for taking Hayes away from the world or whatever. Like, you know, your mom, your daughter would be ashamed of you and go to hell, whore, or whatever the trolls were saying. And I thought we were firmly on on Anne Hathaway's side needed to be for this movie. Not so much, huh? I really wanted to be. I mean, she was doing her best to channel her best Julia Roberts, like Pretty Woman, Eat, Pray, Love vibe. So I got that and I wanted to get behind it. And I was with her through the, I'm just going to have this experience for myself. But then when she's constantly hot and cold, I felt like it was indicative of her kind of immature baseline behavior. Like she invites him to his house for a sandwich and then she's like, yeah, no. And then she like goes to Europe and then she's like, yeah, no. And then he comes to her house and she's like, yeah, no. And then five years later, she's like, okay. And I'm like, feels like drama. I didn't buy it when she was like, yeah, no, Izzy doesn't deserve this. You know, it just felt like she was unable to handle this relationship. Like they didn't have to be traipsing around like arms draped on each other in public every day. Like celebrities manage to maintain relationships in a semblance of a private fashion where they can keep their families intact. I didn't buy it. She felt immature and she felt I don't know kind of bitchy like there wasn't a better way and I'm not blaming her at all but there wasn't a better way for her to handle the pool scene like how about you you're a grown-up and you're like hey you guys are kind of being mean to me I mean I get I don't know she was all sensitive and indecisive overly emotional and it was so hard to feel bad for her in her like Silver Lake bungalow and it was laughable when she was like all sad and dejected looking out the window in her like cushy first class seat I was like oh not really do I sound bitter well, let's just say that I did not expect for you to be the person. Didn't she say in the movie that people hate happy women? <laughs> Why you got to hate? <laughs> and and this is the problem, I think, maybe because this movie is so intended for me. So I get it that you're... Pl- so this at least means you're going to be real about it when we get to our line of questioning. Listen, I'm a Swifty. I believe in love. Rom-coms or romantic movies are not my go-to, but I can appreciate them. Noted. Qualification over. Ready? Go. When he walks out of the bathroom and there's that awkward exchange, number one, it was unrealistic that she would have thought that that trailer was a VIP, even in VIP situations. And I've been at festivals where VIP is a thing. That's not a thing. That That's not a bathroom where it's all quiet and serene and lots of room and nobody waiting in line. Anyway, um, when he walks out or when she goes into the bathroom and he's like, what the hell? And then she emerges and he's got that thing with the leg up on the thing. Did he think she was a groupie? Yes. And so he was prepared to do it? Well, they established later on by the pool that hanging out is the new doing it. And so he says, do you want to hang out? I've got kombucha. It tastes like salad. Uh, That was his line. Yeah. Not exactly real in the exchanges. I found by and large that in group settings, it didn't feel real to me, but it did feel real in their intimate moments. I was surprised at the direction that the emotional thrust took this movie and kind of took me where I felt their emotionality was real because it transcended, I think, the typical romantic comedy surface level emotionality. Yeah, it's just me. 
It was an interesting choice that a lot of their scenes, especially early on, play out in semi-real time. Like, we spent a lot of time with them in that trailer. We spent a lot of screen time in the when he comes over for the sandwich. I think it was an interesting choice by the filmmakers because mostly we're fast forwarding through this relationship until they can consummate it, then break up. A lot of, uh, not a lot of montaging. So if they're going to hang out, AKA Bone, almost immediately, if this is happening in real time, Jody walks in. If she was a groupie, Jody wasn't knocking. She was just opening the trailer door and bouncing in and out. Yeah, but Jody, I'm sure, is used to boning in trailers and boning on Lear Jets. Uh, but she still gave her the confused eye, like, wait, you're not his art consultant? What? <laughs> Who do they think they were fooling? Yeah, I don't know. It's, and, and why do they think they need to put on airs within the group, within the cone of silence? This is a little bit my point. The idea of realism in the the settings where it's not just the two of them making out or crying or whatever, you know? It didn't feel feel particularly real and I was confused by how off set that was from the real intimate scenes where they were saying what I felt to be genuine sentiments like you she she waffled a little bit for sure but women waffle a little bit I'm very sorry and dudes follow their penis in a straight line toward the vag and she had a vag and he was all about it you can't use that as the poster quote but we took it all we brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. But she was a real person who was trying to balance her passion and a little bit of fun with the practicality of the situation. That she had drama in her love life, didn't need the drama of girls hating on her and social people camping outside of her house and and how it would how it would make her ex husband jealous and stuff. But whatever. So is he says he got her number from the thing or the invoice or whatever. But I don't know that that would have her personal cell phone number on. It. If well, he, if he was an older dude and she was a much younger woman and he was Google searching her to find out her private address and phone number, that would definitely be weird. Was it weird when the younger dude, the pop star dude, who wasn't really in a position of authority here, was Googling her and showing up at her business? No, it wasn't creepy. People don't give each other phone numbers or email addresses anymore. They're like, DM me. And they, like, give social media handles. So I think that that's more commonplace. If you're asking about if the roles were reversed, would that change the dynamic? Of course it does. But th that was the whole point of this movie was showing, contrasting how people react to, you know, an older woman with a younger man. And what was exemplified in her ex-husband's relationship where, you know, he it was an older man who went after a younger woman at his law firm yeah. or whatever. And how somehow that's more acceptable. But maybe that was my problem with the relationship is I didn't see that it was weird or wrong. Oh, no, I didn't really get I didn't get a, a May-December vibe in that way where that felt icky kind of all the way through. And despite the fact that I thought he looked dumb, I wasn't cringing when they were together. That's not entirely true. There was a, a, a weird role reversal that I'm, I can't really put my finger on in terms of rightness or wrongness or okayness because she, again, being the older person, was the one being pursued and yet she seemed to have all the power because he was a gentle person probably an old soul in the novelization of this movie that that uh, he that she could say this isn't right i can't do this and he's like but but maybe but like later on but i'll still be around or whatever let me know okay i'll get you a first class ticket home from barcelona or whatever they met somewhat on an equal ground because you know he had all of this life experience through August Moon or whatever, and she was maybe a little stunted, you know, single mom who had a child very young and missed this stage of her life where she goes traipsing around on a epic romance. Yeah. But again, they handled it differently than I would have expected. Like, I thought that the husband's new woman 
would just be head down in her phone, like chewing gum or whatever with bangle bracelets, being like, hi, like when they go and pick up the kid or whatever. And she wasn't, she was more real. That doesn't mean that she was going to be her buddy or anything. But the last minute inclusion of the girlfriend saying she was leaving him because of all the same uh, sentiments that Solène shared was unnecessary. And it, it like it didn't need to happen in a romantic comedy and was curious that it happened and gave that character dimensionality that I felt was real. And likewise, the teenager was so real, except when she was bouncing around and jumping up and down at Coachella with her friends and being a typical dumb kid seemed much more adult. And I was like, oh, that woman is at least 22 years old. Right. And in fact, she is. The actress <laughs> is 22. But they felt real like she's like mom how could you with Hayes of all people I had his poster but she was like I hate that people hate you for loving him and now get, let me give you a hug it, it was interesting character dynamics that worked for me on a level that I found surprising except my next question and and I was going to save this revelation in a boogeyman style kind of way until the end but when he takes the rotten milk from her and drinks it. Was any part of that cute or charming? Or did you have the reaction that she had, which was, why would you do that? Like, his health, he's on tour for God's sake. Why? <laughs> why? And, and I immediately thought that was as unrealistic and confusing confounding and subbing in for a cute endearing moment and literally when she said why would you do that i thought of kumail nanjani in the lovebirds when they like broke through the window and like assaulted that dude and they were messing with him and he was like why would you do that and kumail nanjani said yeah why would we do that and i was like yeah why would you do that that's unrealistic so that was a bad moment akin to the lovebirds i'm gonna try not to let that taint my experience for this movie until after the fact when i was doing research that i discovered that this movie was directed by the same dude who directed the lovebirds did you make this connection you recommended we cover a movie directed by the same person who directed the lovebirds michael showalter your most despised movie you're the movie that you hate the most in, or whatever movie's history? I will admit that 15 to 20% of that review was time and place. It was an extremely uncomfortable viewing experience, but that movie, I, but I, I still maintain that movie was absolutely indefensible. And so when it came to the less realistic, less resonant parts of this movie, I had a Lovebirds vibe, and yet every time they would get behind closed doors and I would expect the conversation to go one way, it would go a completely different way. And maybe that's what you brushed up against. Again, first of all, did you find the milk thing at all cute or endearing? It wasn't completely unmotivated. He was attempting to be chivalrous. I was more confused about the efficacy of the milk. If the, if the fridge just went down, the milk doesn't spoil instantaneously. Like, was it already past its expiry date and the refrigerator <laughs> went down? Like, what, what? I'm not sure why this is so confounding. And also, yeah, you don't taste it unless you're like, I'm eating cereal and I'm just going to give it a try. This is totally the practical 40s mom uh, in you that's like the milk it doesn't say if it's not bad, we're not going to get more milk just because you think the date is passed. Yeah, because it's more of a suggestion. It's not. <laughs> it's also, they're not expiry dates anymore, uh, by the way. They are sell by dates. They're sell by dates if you look at them. Expiry which means that it's your responsibility to decide when it's spoiled. But he seemed to suggest after the taste, and he made that face, that the milk had indeed expired. Well, because it was pr because you don't want to drink warm milk. I mean, some people. Uh, so. But like room temperature. Yeah. Milk? So what I was getting to is that that stuff all felt fake to me. And the stuff that that to me took unexpected turns where I was like, oh, that's interesting, is maybe the stuff that you were brushing up against. She was like, yeah, no, you know, leave when it's like all easy and convenient in L.A. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm in I'm going to be in New York, New York. Yeah. 
That's not it. I mean, we don't live in Europe. You don't just like hop on a one hour domestic. It's a five, six hour flight that she's going to suddenly she she suddenly decides that it's worth it to to hop on, go across the country for booty call. And on her dime. Yes. In which case she flew coach and had a middle seat. She would have gotten all sweaty in her seductive dress or whatever. It would have been awkward. Do you think she changed at the airport? You don't travel. <laughs> yes, you don't travel in the seductive dress. You go to the arrival airport and then you zhuzh up a little bit before you take get a cab to the hotel. Not that I would know. I was reading the signs from a dude perspective and it was, you know, and maybe there's a level of like, oh, that would be great if that happened where a woman actually did show up. Because in my experience, the woman's not traveling on her dime for you because you say after you've been rejected in New York just because you have a suite or whatever. And so when she showed up, I was kind of surprised. And when she's like ready for sexy time, I was kind of surprised. But the, what I was going back to, I wanted to say about the, the whole dynamic uh, of this was that it was awkward in parts where I didn't expect because she's the older person in control. I would identify more with her character being the rational adult and not the lovesick kid in the boy band or whatever. Except she gets in the hotel and then she busts one and it gets progressively louder. And at exactly that moment, even though I'm a full fledged adult, 24 year old Rebecca emerges and goes into the kitchen for pizza or something. And it was <laughs> hella awk. It was see you uh... next Wednesday. American Werewolf in London porno theater awk when Rebecca walked through. And it, it, she kept getting louder. This crazy thing happened where it would be like a teenager's nightmare. Uh, we played this movie on Prime on my PlayStation 5. And the remote was up updating. The controller had an update. And I was like, no. But I think it was still updating because it was doing a blinky light thing. And the remote wouldn't <laughs> let me pause. So it was just blaring. And we had it up loud no. and it was like thumping during the Coachella performance. And anytime he sang and the montages, it was really loud. And I couldn't pause it or turn the volume down. I found out I could on the other remote. But while the kid traipsed through the kitchen and I was like, this is so awkward. And it's so weird oh, no. being that, being like the parent figure in that situation. It was a surreal experience. Oh, my God. If you... If you were Rebecca's dad, how old would you be when you had What's her? What's wrong with you? What? Let's see. She's 24. I'm 47. So what? 23. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty idea of you. Relatable. And so by bust one, you mean Anne Hathaway's like getting fingered and having a big orgasm and then Rebecca walks into the Yeah, room. well, walked into the kitchen in full earshot of the loud busting on my unmutable television. While you're watching this movie with her mom? Uh-huh. Anyway... I was following along this movie, but again, I expected a flat out romantic comedy and meet cutes and and then crying in the rain and stuff. And then, you know, I obviously I expected them to get together, but that wasn't a given. And I honestly think this would have been a stronger movie if he had left and she was sitting there and she looks up at the sculpture and she does the crying laugh thing. And she's like, whoa, that was hard. And boy, that's crazy how life is. Let me get on with my lonely life. Go to credits. I thought that kind of would have been better. But the five years later, the CODA thing felt like it was maybe unnecessary. And it also brought this movie much closer to two hours, which is absurdly long for a rom-com. I wonder if that was frustrating for you because it would have been tighter and cleaner and better if it had taken a firm stance and not gone the traditional rom-com route. Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was a, that was a very, very obscure. Billy Magnuson. Uh, big short response. I just think that you have so little regard for this genre that it doesn't take much to please you. Like the fact that the daughter is human enough to be like, Mom, you're sad. I want you to be happy. And that that's surprising and refreshing. It just goes to show how caricature these characters can be. The ex-husband, Daniel, was probably the closest we got to like caricature in his douchebagness. <laughs> but I think the chick, Ava... I think 
her leaving Daniel was intended to motivate Daniel's kind of fit when he comes to the house and takes a stand against Hayes for whatever purpose that ultimately served. I mean, maybe that was like the beginning of the end for Selene because she's like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm not seeing an effect that her father is seeing. Um, So pretty standard douchebag ex-husband. But I uh, but I liked that Selene was for the most part honest even if she was a little waffly, and that she ultimately made the right decision about her daughter, although I think there could have been other ways for her to also live her life. Maybe if there was anything she was dishonest about, it was that the relationship, for what it was worth, wasn't working for her at that time. And she was allowed to harbor her little secret love and her unrequited love for five years or whatever until he came back. But boy, was that cliche. I don't know, dude. Well, look, absolutely. There were cliche moments. But I think it was trying to achieve something. And I was oh so grateful because had this been a wacky, fun, romantic comedy, I think it would have been sunk in Lovebird's territory. And so I don't view this as a redemption for Michael Showalter as much as I do a reprieve where I was prepared to hate with conviction. I'm like, okay, I'm going to let this one slide. Maybe next time I can fully hate you, but I didn't this time. And so I don't forget because I think Lovebirds was unforgivable, but this one was forgivable. (laughs) And therefore... All right. Definitely an all right movie because I appreciated the emotional heft of the scenes. Like they get down when she starts talking about her ex-husband and the horrible things he did. And you I feel the emotionality when he was like getting broken up with and started to tear up. I was like, look at the dumb faced kid. He's kind of bringing it when he could have just been like, well, whatever. I have legions of fans just waiting to hop on my bone. Like, it it didn't do that. And despite it going full circle to a cliched ending, I was kind of with it, man. If you want a real rom-com, like, where is the Annie Mumolo starer? That would be real. Why is she stuck in these supporting roles? And the problem with the casting is more than the Anne Hathaway bitch halo. It's this idea that we should feel bad about this person which who seems like they have an otherwise pretty charmed life. It had a weird dreamy kind of vibe where their romance was forbidden but not all that forbidden like it's going to be fine or whatever. <laughs> it's gonna, nothing in that 5 years later wouldn't cure. All right. Well, Show Walter has achieved some form of redemption with the idea of you because Wes gives this film an all right and I give it a boring. That's our discussion on the idea of you, a.k.a. Sad Woman in First Class. What did you think? 818-835-0473 or whatever movies at gmail.com. We referenced some films in this discussion, including Lovebirds. Ugh, not really a film so much as an exercise in suck. Which is available at orwhatevermovies.com or wherever you get podcasts, along with 300 plus additional episodes. Thank you for listening and thank you for supporting Or Whatever Movies. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's Miriam Love here, and I want to share something very special with you. Check out my new release, All In The Spanish Remixes, out now on Electric House Records. And always remember, be love, share love, all love. Available now wherever you listen to music. Electric acid. Welcome to the Candle Power Hour. Come with us backstage, behind the scenes of show business spanning over four decades and bringing you the experiences that can only be told by the people who were there. Our guests are from the A-list, the F-list, and everyone in between. Get set for some of the most insane, hilarious, and inspiring stories you will ever hear. I'm Mercury. And I'm Diego. Your host for The The Candle Candle Power Power Hour. Hour. Electric Acid.